Well, a very warm welcome to you. Thank you for joining us on this very special occasion, the 2020 Insight Investment Astronomy Photographer of the Year, here from the Royal Observatory Greenwich by the majestic Great Equatorial Telescope. I am John Coleshaw and delighted to be joined by the Senior Manager for Public Astronomy here at the Royal Observatory, Dr. Emily Drebeck Maunder. Lovely to join you and a landmark year for the competition. Absolutely. So in the 12th year of the competition, we actually received a record-breaking number of entries. So over 5,200 images from over 90 countries across six continents, which was really amazing. Now, this is our first live awards ceremony. So if you do have any questions for John or I, um, we were both judges in the competition, then do please feel free to send us those on social media, or you can use the hashtag Astrophoto 2020. Keep your questions polite, won't you? Stay within the Queensberry rules. An amazing number of photographs there that you mentioned, an amazing number of images. And I suppose that uh, reflects the fact that this era is where the most images and photographs are being taken by everybody. It's more accessible by everyone now. And that's reflected in the competition this year. Yeah, absolutely, it is. So let's get underway. Thank you for joining us at this, the 2020 Insight Investment Astronomy Photographer of the Year. Good evening and welcome to Flamsteed House in the Royal Observatory Greenwich. Charles II, king and celebrity, once ironically decreed the close observation of the stars at this location. Insight Investment Astronomy Photographer of the Year has had to go virtual. But every cloud has a silver lining and this has extended our reach. So I can truly commend to you the best space photography competition in the universe. It was once said, we are all in the gutter, but some of us are looking at the stars. And there's a magnificence in the night sky and in celestial observation, which breaks through the humdrum, prosaic nature of our daily lives and gives us the opportunity to share in the magnificent possibilities. And those are brought to us in an absolutely sublime set of images that have been established by this photography competition. So nothing comes of nothing, and tonight we celebrate the dark and the lonely work of our photographers who have been able to give you access to those wonderful images of our universe. It's a competition. There will be winners. But let me promise you, the real winners will be those of you who come to our exhibition and see these wonderful images. I look forward to seeing you there. Now, there are a few people I need to say thank you to because a lot of work has gone into organizing this evening. So first and foremost is to our prime sponsor, Insight Investment. This is the seventh year that they've been partnering us and I'd like to thank them very much for their insight and their farsight and for the wonderful work and support that they've done. Also, I'd like to thank you, the, thank the sky at night Thank you very much for your constant advocacy of celestial observation. It's been truly wonderful and continues to be. And then HarperCollins, 
for the absolutely cracking book that they've published that goes alongside the exhibition and showcases these fantastic images. Last but by no means least, I have to thank the exhibition team at Royal Museums Greenwich and in particular Lissy Calderwood. Thank you Lissy. Now it only remains for me to wish you all a lovely evening and to hand you back to the very capable and the inimitable John Culshaw. John. So let's have our first category, and it's the young category. Never mind the stars of the future, the stars of right now, as far as astrophotography is concerned. Let's take a look at the shortlist. Such a competitive category this year as it is every year. We have three highly commended in this category. The first of those, Collision Course. And this one comes from Winslow Barnwood, aged 15. Also, the Carina Region, from Logan Nicholson, also aged 15. And Light Bridge in the Sky, from Ziguan Zhang, aged 12. And the runner-up, no stranger to this competition, Thea Hutchinson aged 13, with detached prominences. And this is the winner. It's Four Planets and the Moon, from the 10-year-old Alice Fock Hang. This image is so detailed, it captures the planets Venus, Mercury, Jupiter, Saturn, and even the Moon setting over the Indian Ocean. It's especially amazing that a 10-year-old created such a detailed photograph of the night sky. It's outstanding and very well done. Je suis vraiment très heureuse d'avoir remporté ce prix. J'ai toujours voulu inclure plusieurs planètes dans ma photo. J'ai dû attendre des mois pour avoir cette conjonction particulière et à travailler mes panoramiques. Et puis la magie a opéré. La lumière zodiacale est venue éclairer l'ensemble de ma photo et je suis très heureuse de la partager avec le monde entier. Je m'appelle Alice Fogan et je suis la gagnante de la catégorie junior astrophotographe de l'année 2020. The next category is our moon. Our moon is our closest neighbor in space. It's also a particular favorite object for astrophotographers because we never quite have the same view of it every night. The shortlisted photographs for this category are... The commended photograph for this category is Moon Base by Daniel Kozella. The runner-up is HDR Partial Lunar Eclipse with Clouds by Ethan Roberts. And the winner of our moon category is Tycho Crater Region with Colors by Elaine Pelu. Tycho Crater, one of the most familiar areas of the moon, I think. So recognizable with the naked eye. So it's marvelous to see it with all of this extra detail, all of these colors so brilliantly brought out, giving that sense of the collection of substances and materials that actually compose the moon. So it leaves us with the feeling, not just the light of the silvery moon, but the light of the entire spectrum. So wonderfully captured here, the Tycho Crater region, 
with colors. You certainly could say that. Hello, I am Alain Payouk from France and this year I have the privilege to be the winner of the Armand category. So it's a big surprise and great pleasure for me because my picture is the result of a long uh, work. I spent eight years on this uh, project. So many thanks to everyone. It's a kind of accomplishment for me. So many thanks. Just be safe, clear sky to everyone and bye bye. Time for our next category, and it's Aurora. Always strongly contested. The challenge is often not to make the images too kitsch, not to be too cliched. That's always something our images always strongly avoid. So let's take a look at the shortlist, the shimmering emerald shortlisted images. Highly commended, it was a personal favourite of mine. Iceland by Christina McKeever. The runner up, Lone Tree under a Scandinavian Aurora from Tom Archer. Winning image, so glorious, so optimistic. I like to describe it as though it was taken on the borderline of the afterlife, just to be poetic. It's The Green Lady by Nicholas Rommel. This photograph of an aurora is breathtaking and ethereal. It's hard to imagine that such a phenomena can be seen from the earth. The judges thought that this image was a hopeful and uplifting vision. Hi guys, I'm Nicholas. I'm so excited, super happy and completely stoked that my picture of the Green Lady has made it to the very top of the Aurora category. And here's why. I've seen some really beautiful displays of the Northern Lights in my life so far, as it might be the same for some of you guys out there, but honestly, I've never ever seen the Green Lady in person before, have you? Our next category is our sun. Our sun is the closest star to us in space, but it's particularly challenging to capture because of the specialist filters needed in order to view it safely. Our photographers this year have not only captured our sun, but also some astronomical phenomenon that's related to the sun. Our shortlisted photographs are category we have a highly commended photograph which is ultraviolet by Alan Friedman The runner up in this category is 145 seconds of darkness by Philip Ogrzelski And the winner of this category is Liquid Sunshine by Alexandra Hart. As we see more of these kind of images, the technology and the detail just takes us closer to the surface of the sun. This resembling boiling gold, bubbling molten honey almost. It's uh, visceral and intriguing to see and to imagine that one of those cells, one of those small sections there, about a thousand kilometers in size. 
Wow, I'm absolutely overwhelmed that I've won the Our Sun category. Um, it's taken about a year to perfect imaging the photosphere in such high magnification. Um, and it took about three days last spring to get the scene just perfect in order to do this. Um, my first love is granulation cells in the photosphere and I had great fun imaging them. Um, it's a unique picture which I adore even though my husband thinks it looks like a plate of egg bait. But thanks guys for picking my image as a winner. There are some categories which benefit from spontaneity, a quick artful image grabbed, those lucky shots. Others require hours of meticulous work, compositing complexity, grabbing the faintest objects, the deepest sky objects. Let's have a look at the shortlist in this category, galaxies. This is highly commended from Juan Carlos Munoz Mateus, and look at this imagining a bold Star Wars style sound effect, attack on the large Magellanic cloud. Runner up with NGC 3628 with the 300,000 light year long tail. And the winning image with a rather dimensionally transcendental quality about it is from Nicholas Lefadu and Andromeda Galaxy at arm's length. This image is so unique and almost makes this colossal Andromeda Galaxy look miniature, even though it has about one trillion stars. It almost looks like you can hold it in the palm of your hand. I am very glad that my image of the Andromeda galaxy won uh, the galaxy category. Andromeda is the most photographed galaxy. To show it in a different and creative way, like it would be close by and floating among stars, I had to make several trials with different 3D printed parts to get the effect I was looking for. And I am very happy that it has been chosen uh, as uh, the galaxy category winner. This category is planets, comets, and asteroids. These are all objects we can find in our own solar system, orbiting our sun alongside us. These photographs in planets, comets, and asteroids show us just how dynamic space really is. Let's take a look at the shortlisted images. The highly commended for this category is the ghost of Al Nalam and a near-Earth asteroid by Robert Stevens. The runner-up for this category is In the Outer Reaches by Martin Lewis. And the winner of this category is In the Space Between Us by Lucas Sujka. Well, this was a wonderfully close alignment of the Moon and Jupiter from the 31st of October 2019. Gives you something of a feeling of the scale of the solar system, our neighborhood in the galaxy, and a very challenging image to achieve in, in terms of the, the data acquisition. Uh, Jupiter and the Moon traveling across the sky rather quickly um, and to just feel that sense of the, the neighbourhood of our solar system. Very evocative. Hello everybody, Lucas Suica from Poland here. 
In the beginning, I want to say that I'm very, extremely happy that my picture has been chosen as a winning image in Planet Comet and Asteroids Category 2020 competition. Thank you. It was really a lucky shot. I didn't have much time for preparations and also whole phenomenon was quite fast, so proper timing and framing was a significant challenge. Fortunately, I was successful and I was really glad that I had a chance to share with you my final space between us photographs. Thank you once again. These guys to all of you. Bye. Our next category, capturing the feeling of how human beings are part of the universe and how we interact with it. It's people and space. Let's have a look at the shortlisted images. Highly commended, it's Yang Suti with Azure Vapor Traces. The runner up, observe the heart of the galaxy by Tian Li. Giving a note of caution to those who may be cavalier towards observational astronomy, Raphael Schmoll, the prison of technology. I think there's something incredibly heartbreaking in this image. You can see that the star Albareo is surrounded by trails of moving man-made satellites. It does make you ask the question, will there ever be a time when we can't see or photograph our night sky and only see satellites overhead? Hello everybody, I am so blissful and pleased to have won the people and space category. My photo took a one hour uh, planning and uh, a little luck uh, about the weather on <laughs> Christmas night. Uh, my image uh, show the problems of the mega constellations very uh, conspicuous. Uh, I am happy about to share uh, this image with the world and I hope about the space uh, company will find a solution to uh, decrease the satellite's visibility for astronomy. The next category is stars and nebulae. These images show some of the most colorful and breathtaking regions of our universe. Nebulae highlight where stars live from birth to death. Let's take a look at the shortlisted images. commended image for this category is the Misty Elephant's Trunk by Min Z.
The runner-up for this category is The Dolphin Jumping Out of an Ocean of Gas by Connor Mathern. And the winner of Stars and Nebulae is A Cosmic Inferno by Peter Ward. Very aptly named this, The Cosmic Inferno, an image that caught the attention of the judges right from the beginning. You can't take your eye away from it. It captures the, the violence that we have in star-forming regions, visceral, and there's also a grace to it which belies that violence that we know is taking place but the glorious golden and orange and deep red shades. A cauldron in the universe. A true cosmic inferno. Hello from Sydney, Australia, on which is a rather fine but chilly winter's afternoon. I was absolutely delighted to receive the news that I received this year's Inside Astrophotography of the Year Award for Stars and Nebula. That particular image was literally taken from this observatory in my backyard that was taken under rather challenging conditions. At the time, the entire area was shrouded in bushfire smoke during the devastating fires of last summer. We're sorry we can't travel to the UK this year to see the exhibition. Unfortunately, due to the COVID lockdown, we're stuck here in Sydney, but we really look forward to traveling to the UK when things settle down and see what we know will be a marvelous exhibition. I'll cherish this award for years to come and thank you very much. Good night. This next category, Skyscapes, captures the feeling of, I'll say this is Carl Sagan, astronomy being a humbling and character building experience. We cannot fail to be impressed in standing under the majesty of a starlit sky. Skyscapes. Here's our shortlisted images. Highly commended, Carl Sagan is probably appropriate once again here. Voice of the Universe by Wei Zhang Chen. The runner up, maybe the Earth has never looked more Martian than it does in this image. It's Desert Magic from Stefan Lieberman. The beautiful winner, Painting the Sky, from Thomas Kast. This photograph captures the delicate and colorful nacreous clouds. They're caused when light reflects off ice crystals high in Earth's stratosphere. This is such a stunning image, and the sky almost resembles the inside of an oyster shell. Hello, and Terve from Finland. I'm Thomas, and I'm honored to have won the Skyscapes category of this year's contest. Thank you very much. I'm so happy to receive this award. The polar stratospheric clouds, I've been looking for them for many, many years. I've seen northern lights all over the place, all kinds of colors and stuff, but never this phenomena. So I'm very happy this photo got recognized and I'll always remember this. Thank you very much. Congratulations to all the other winners and many greetings to England. We're now moving on to the special prizes in our competition. The first of these prizes was actually new this year. It's the Annie Maunder Prize for Image Innovation. You didn't actually need to be an experienced astrophotographer to enter. Instead, we challenged entrants to innovate publicly available images from powerful research telescopes all around the world. 
There were some amazing photographs entered in for this prize in the competition. And the entrants definitely use their creativity to highlight the beauty of space and also tease out the science of what is really going on in the universe. Let's take a look at those shortlisted images. The winner for the first Annie Maunder Prize for Image Innovation is Dark River by Julie Hill. Thanks, Emily, and this really is a most unusual entry. Innovation for sure. 84 million stars represented here and all compressed and, and screwed up and shown in this way. Maybe the folding and the texture, perhaps it represents the dark energy, the dark matter that is binding all of these stars together in the universe itself. It's another way to think of things, another way to visualize things, and a worthy innovation winner of this Annie Maunder Prize. I'm delighted to have won the Annie Maunder Prize for Image Innovation this year uh, with my work Dark River, which is probably the most ambitious work I've made to date. Um, I love the way that uh, scientific data can take on a new life through print and sculpture in this piece and I'm delighted to be part of this competition to be able to share this with a wider audience so thank you. And the second of our two prizes tonight, it's the Sir Patrick Moore Prize. In fact, hang on, let me do this properly. It is the Sir Patrick Moore Prize for Best Newcomer. The images are quite, quite splendid. Let's observe them. just the winner. In the efficient manner, perfectly the style of Sir Patrick Moore, the winner is Waves from Ben's Toth. The judges thought that this photograph was technically very challenging and admired the detail that can be seen in the image. The nebula seems quite three-dimensional and there is a sense of movement almost like waves crashing down overhead. California Nebula was one of my very first narrow band targets. Originally, I started astrophotography because of two reasons. First, to challenge myself with the technical difficulties of creating a good photograph. And second, which is by far more important to me, is to show other people how beautiful our universe is. I'm really excited to be honored with this prize because it is a good feedback for the first and a great opportunity for the second. Thank you. Well, that moment is almost upon us. We feel the tension. We are distanced, uh, as per the regulations, exactly one uh, indoor astronomical unit apart. Uh, Emily, great to be uh, back with you by the great equatorial telescope here. Well, and nice to see you again, John. And this, uh, this moment of announcing the overall winner certainly brings back memories of the judging day. Some intense moments that day. Absolutely, and it was a really difficult decision with many discussions. And it's because there were so many amazing images to choose from, but I think the best image won out in the end. I think so, and that they were discussions, not arguments. It never got like that, but I, I do think so. Certainly the uh, astrophotography experts and former winners who were on the judging panel, this was the image that they were really, really campaigning for, and the one that they wanted to see winning this title. And so, the Insight Investment Astronomy Photographer of the Year winning image is the Andromeda Galaxy at arm's length. Congratulations, Nicholas Lefferdu. It really, really is spectacular, is the word. It's almost hypnotic. It makes you look at it just trying to figure out the dimensions. You can imagine 
if Andromeda can be compressed to this image which you feel is right in front of you, that you could hold it in your hand. Imagine holding an entire galaxy within your hand. This gives you something of the feeling of, I don't know, the depth of material that you'd find at the centre of a supermassive black hole. It's, uh, it, it, it's toying with our perceptions here and it really deserves its uh, overall winning status for this inventiveness that we see here. Never seen anything quite like this one. And I think what's really fascinating about this image, John, is that the photographer actually had to 3D print a part in order to hold the camera at the right angle to take this photograph. I've never seen anything like it. It truly is spectacular. Uh, I am uh, incredibly happy and grateful to have been chosen as uh, the overall winner of the competition. I was really not expecting it. I think it's great encouragement for everyone to be creative, to, in to innovate, to explore new possibilities. And for that, what we need is not be cheer, it is uh, imagination and ideas. I want to encourage everyone to promote night protection by sharing our passion for the beauties of the night. Thank you so much. Congratulations once again, Nicholas Lefferdu. A, a wonderful, uh, I'm actually hypnotized just looking at that image again. There is something of another dimension about it. And as we were saying, judging day, everybody was really latching onto that one from very early on. Absolutely, and it really is a spectacular photograph to see, very unique. And this amazing way that you, you were describing how Nicholas uh, digitally printed and created, 3D printed, the, the, the precise parts that he needed to absolutely that effect. I mean he really had to plan out the image and it really is very um, well it's just very creative and inventive so uh, congratulations Nicholas Lefferdu our overall winner for 2020 and you will be inspiring next year's winners uh, from this moment on so many congratulations to you for that and uh, good luck for any future photographs that you uh, invent. I'm sure there will be many, many more. We would like to thank you for sending in your questions as we went through the shortlisted entries and the winners there. Uh, they are, the viewers have done us proud, haven't they? You have some of the questions here. Absolutely, I do have some of the questions here. Now, before we get started though, uh, I believe there was a bit of a technical difficulty going on uh, earlier in the live stream. So if you were watching on YouTube or our website, you may have missed a few minutes at the beginning. So you will have the opportunity to look over what you missed at the end of the live stream. So do check that out. Uh, but here, I have some of your questions now. Um, and they really are just rolling in. Um, so first question is from Phil uh, from Facebook. And Phil asks, what would you say as a judge are the top qualities you look for in an image to select it? And what are the most common reasons to reject a picture? Wow, that's a, a very uh, challenging question to get started with. I think that a part of it is uh, the sense of the images that strike you straight away. Yeah. There is an initial wow factor with some of them. And well, all of them really, but some of them you're just particularly hypnotized by. So that they strike you emotionally. Yes. And you can imagine the, and appreciate the composition. Um, and, and some of them just grab you and you feel like you want to root for them uh, during the, uh, the discussions on the judging day. Um, I think some of the reasons why some of them are maybe rejected and don't go on to win. Uh, I noticed it this year in the discussions. Some of the uh, former winners and the real astrophotography experts, they might be able to just pick out one or two aspects where there might have been perhaps a bit too much photoshopping that just took it away from yeah. reality, that kind of thing. Um, but really it's just the blend of the astronomical scientific value of it and the visual wow. I think that is really the key. There's so many different things that we need to look for when we're looking through the images because we are getting thousands of images in and some of them are just really special. So you need to have the, the technical um, aspect there. So the stars have to be crisp and everything you're looking at needs to be really, really clear. But also the composition has to be there. You, it really needs to be visually striking. 
um, kind of grabbing you when you first look at the image. And also, there's, it's really nice if there's a story there uh, behind the image as well. So I think that always wins the judges around if there's a really nice story behind the image, um, either with uh, the technical difficulties of taking the image or just what the photographer really wanted to, to put across there. In the particular categories, people in space or skyscapes, they really do take you to those astronomical positions to those places where you're there with the astronomers, you're there with the photographers, and there's a, a lovely empathy that comes with those particular categories. They're some of my favorite categories. Absolutely, yeah. Now remember, do keep sending us your questions. You can use the hashtag Astrophoto2020, and you can also contact us on social media. So the next question that I have here um, is how was the winning image taken um, to make it look 3D? And so that was sent to us by Polly from Facebook. Um, so I can describe that in a little more detail. Um, the winning image, really, the, the photographer, Nicholas Lefadu, had to 3D print a part um, to take this image. And really, what he's doing is defocusing the stars in our own galaxy that are in between us and the Andromeda galaxy. And then, so what you get are these defocused stars and then a really crisp galaxy behind it. And so that gives you a really good sense of depth. So again, he really had to plan that image out and it really is something incredibly unique. The judges really hadn't seen anything like that before. Yes, and they really campaigned for it. For me, it was rather symbolic. The, the universe is infinite and vast and almost beyond our understanding, but Einstein could describe it. And all of the power of the universe compressed, compressed into one human mind of a genius. That, photog that picture has, has something of the symbolism of that, I think. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, next question is Shauna from Facebook. Which of the photographs is your personal favorite? Oh my goodness me, these uh, questions are... Uh very challenging, so almost impossible to choose. I did love Moonbase. Yes. That yeah. lovely silvery moon above the, uh, the, those images on the top of a, a mountain there, those buildings. It very space age, very sort of like something from Thunderbirds. It almost seemed like something out of science fiction, that, didn't yeah. it? Yes, that was a, a quite a mass quality. And I also did love um, the Green Lady. Yes. That was so ethereal. I, I think that was a contender for the overall winner as well. Absolutely. Uh, lots were campaigning for that one, but just the, f for impact and such a positive feeling, especially during the, the recent months that everyone's been going through. This was uh, an uplifting, inspiring image that, uh, that stays with you. Yeah, absolutely. It really, really does. That, that was a personal favorite of mine as well. So I think my personal favorite is going to be Attack on the Magellanic Clouds. Um, so it, it's just a really fun image. Um, it's also incredibly beautiful. It's well put together. But I think it really says something about the science of what's going on behind the image as well and how astrophysicists um, are able to study space with telescopes. So those lasers that you saw in the image, um, those are actually recreating fake stars. Um, and that helps us map the atmosphere. And what that really does is allow astronomers to get a really crisp image of whatever they're looking at. In that case, it was the Magellanic Clouds. And actually, I think that was even a question asked by Alex from Twitter, um, is what exactly are the orange lines in that photograph? And those orange lines are the lasers that are recreating artificial stars in our atmosphere. A very inventive shots as well, and I think uh, the judges are always looking for the type of shot that we haven't seen before, that's got a new kind of imagination to it, or has something new to say. And uh, the image of the, the trails of the satellites going up like that, almost like a, the bars of a prison cell in the sky, symbolically, uh, like pinstripe in front of the stars. Yes. A very important uh, notion there to let us not be cavalier with ground-based observational astronomy. There was a message with that one, wasn't there? Absolutely, the, the prison of technology. And I, like I, I said earlier, um, I think it is a really heartbreaking image. And I think it, you know, it is a question, how long will it be before um, we can't take these beautiful images of the night sky because there are just so many satellites in orbit around the Earth. And so that's something that we're going to have to think of in the future, I think, as we continue to send satellites up. Exactly, and uh, we shall echo what uh, the wonderful photographer of that image said. Let's hope that uh, a solution can be found to that, and that's a wonderful way to highlight that. 
Right, so next question is Sam from Facebook. What was it like judging this year compared to normal years? Now, I was actually, uh, this was my first year judging in the competition, so I didn't know any different, but you could probably answer this one uh, a little bit better than I can. In previous years, we're uh, in, the, in the room where you were presenting from, yes. um, and we're sitting around those round tables, and there are quiet moments where everybody's studying, making their notes, and deliberating, making their thoughts. And then a real good discussion, borderline argument will break out. And everybody will campaign for their favorite. Everybody will speak for the, the strong points and why others may be chosen above other images. And then it settles down and we'll choose. But this uh, particular year, everything being done virtually, I think we were chatting more or less the whole time. There was a lot more talking. It was more... Uh, more active talk, I think, less moments of just concentration, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, it, it was very challenging to be on, um, you know, uh, internet calls for six, seven hours a day, yeah. several days in a row. But, um, but still, it was really amazing to be able to look through all of the photographs and, and really discuss them in more detail. So, um, so yeah. in, in future, I think I would be particularly interested in how different it is um, when we are all in person and, and discussing mm -hmm. them, yeah. It seemed to take longer virtually, maybe ironically, but it did seem to take longer. Yeah. There was more, more discussion going on. Yeah. Okay, so next question that we have is Craig from Facebook. Do you think more people will be turning to stargazing and astrophotography during lockdown? Let's hope so. I, I certainly think so. In those times of, of, of lockdown, um, to turn to astronomy and to turn to astrophotography, I, I just simply like to take uh, an afocal shot with a smartphone over a telescope eyepiece of the different phases of the moon. Uh, I managed to get a crescent Venus as well, a little bit shaky, not up to Pete Lawrence standards, but... Um, but it does connect you with just a wider uh, pattern, the clockwork of the solar system. And I think it's very good for the, for the heart and mind just to connect with that wider sense of astronomy, the solar system and the universe. It does you good. A humbling and character building, as uh, Carl Sagan so famously said, yeah. that's astronomy. And I think it's one of those activities that is a bit easier to do um, in a socially distanced capacity. Um, so you can go out to a park, for example. You don't have to be near other people um, to get involved with astrophotography. And you can use your, your own equipment to do that. Um, also, I think it's a really nice way, as you put it, to feel connected um, with other people around you, not only with the universe, but with other people, because all of us are seeing the same night sky at different times and different aspects of it, but we're all seeing the same night sky and marveling at the same universe. So that's a really nice way to feel connected when um, you, you aren't um, quite able to, to meet other people, really. It was one of Patrick Moore's favorite phrases was, welcome to the universe, you'll never leave. And uh, as we were saying at the, at, at the beginning of, uh, of this evening, everybody has access to a camera now. Uh, smartphone cameras are so good. And that technology is accelerating all the time. Everybody can get really great images. We remember a few years ago the picture of uh, the solar eclipse taken on an iPad mini through an aeroplane window by a young lad aged seven. Um, and you know, spontaneity, that, a great shot can be got if you're lucky, alongside all the wonderful shots of the galaxies and the deep sky objects that take a great deal of work, years to put together. It's wonderful they can be celebrated side by side. Absolutely. Okay, next question that we have coming in is Sean from Facebook. What will be the best astronomical events to photograph this coming year that we can enter into the competition? So there's been well. quite a few things that have happened this year already. Um, we've had a couple of comets that have been really visible um, and lots of astrophotographers have been out taking photographs of those. You may have seen uh, photographs of those over the past few months. So that was right in the middle of lockdown um, that those were coming in. We also have some amazing views of some of the planets that have, that, um, have been around over the summer. So Jupiter and Saturn are currently up 
and Mars is going to reach opposition in October. So I expect there's going to be quite a few pictures of planets and comets that are coming in next year. Mm, lovely conjunction of Mars and the Moon uh, just yes. recently. Okay. I'm looking forward to, you mentioned the comet, uh, Comet Neowise. Yeah. Uh, there were some wonderful evenings where the comet was beautifully visible um, alongside some noctilucent clouds. Uh, that made for a very, very special display. So I'm really looking forward to uh, the shots that come in of that event uh, next year. I'm sure we won't be disappointed. Okay, so next question that we have is Robert from Facebook asks, what's the best way to start taking astronomy photos for the first time? We covered this a little bit, but... Oh, just do it. Just just do it. <laughs> take, your, take your smartphone, anything you can, you can find really, and just... Just do it. Let that feed your enthusiasm and your curiosity. That will lead you to more equipment. That will lead you to other ways of, of, of connecting with it. Um, I know people as well. Dr. Paul Abel uh, very often sketches uh, his observations of the moon or Mars or Saturn. That's a wonderful way to connect with it and just get to learn the details. Um, so astronomy is for everybody. Anyone can try it. And your own smartphone is a great place to start. And I am sure that you will progress pretty quick from there. Now, like you said, there's a lot of different ways to do astrophotography um, and to photograph the night sky. So, um, you know, for example, uh, smartphones now have the capacity to do long exposure photographs. At least some smartphones do. So you can take some really nice long exposure photographs with smartphones. Um, and you can even use um, kind of old style cameras as well. You don't need a digital camera to do this sort of photography. Um, so there's lots of long exposure photographs you can do with older cameras as well. Also, if you don't have a camera and don't have access to a camera, there's also publicly available images from research telescopes all around the world. And so that's what our Annie Maunder Prize was about this year. And so you can actually download that data and practice making images uh, on your own. And you can even enter the competition in that way as well. So you don't have to be an experienced astrophotographer to do astrophotography or to participate in the competition, which is really great. Mm -hmm. Yes, open for everyone. And uh, uh, more questions you yeah. continue to do as proud. More questions, absolutely. So Alex from Twitter asks, um, oh, that, so Alex had, had asked about uh, the orange lines in Attack on the, Ma the Large Magellanic Cloud, so we've answered that one already. Uh, the last one that I have on here is Phil from Facebook asks, does every judge see every, every image entered or do you divide them up? Once they're all shortlisted, yes. Yeah. Once we are approaching that time of judging, we will see all of the, uh, all of the images there. And we'll have, um, we'll have a, a couple of days or more to just cast our look over all of those images and just have our reactions and connect with them. Just have that time to react to them, take it all in, uh, respond to them, and just let your feelings percolate. You, you've got to let them settle. And then by the time we all get around the table or all link up on, on the screen together, like this year, our feelings will be quite nicely in place. And then the discussions can begin. And it's always fascinating to hear what the other judges have seen, things that you never noticed, that never occurred to you personally, to hear that from other people and from other people's fields of expertise. And when all of that gets together, and as, as soon as we discuss the category, that really does start to accelerate. And, and um, yeah, it's, it's, it's very hard work, but gloriously so. Absolutely, and I think what's really nice is that all of the judges, like you said, have their own area of expertise. Um, so the judges might want to look at things from an artistic perspective, or they might want to look at things from a scientific perspective or an astrophotography perspective. Um, and so I think having all of those different experiences and being able to really discuss all of the photographs is a really nice aspect of the competition. Um, so all of the photographs in general, all of the thousands of photographs we receive, not every single one will be seen by every judge. So we have to have the first round where we whittle down the images. And we do that by um, splitting up the categories and going through the, the images individually. A couple of judges will do that for every category. But then once we have 
um, the photographs cut down the first time, then the judges are going to be looking at each of those images. And like John said, um, then all of the judges will look at the shortlisted images and discuss them. So yeah. And this is always part of the uh, procedure where the ceremony has taken place and we've been so bowled over by these incredible images. And it really does start to get you thinking, what will we see next year? Just when you think you can't be amazed even more, all of the photographers will have seen this year's images. They will be inspired by them and that's going to lead them on to the, the next array. And this is where we start to wonder what are we going to see in 2021? Absolutely. Now, okay, the last question that uh -huh. we have then is coming in from Rich uh, from Facebook. When choosing winners, are you viewing the images on a screen or printed? So we're viewing those images on a screen and actually we're looking at them in incredibly high detail and that's, we need that information really for the technical judging of the photographs. Um, so all of that information is going to be on screen. Yes, it's on a, on, on a screen. That always lends itself beautifully to the, to the Aurora shots. They're always the vividness when you see those on a screen. Uh, another particular favourite of mine, the, the Stock's Ness uh, Aurora shot. That deep emerald green, I thought was just hypnotic and gorgeous. And um, that deserved its, uh, its high praise all the way through. But yes, the Aurora on a, on a screen is particularly glorious, I think. Now, so we're just going to be wrapping up the question and answer session now. But if you do have comments, um, definitely still um, continue to send your comments in to hashtag Astrophoto2020, uh, as well as to our social media um, that we have going. Um, also, I just want to give a shout out to the People's Choice Awards. So if you want to participate in one of our awards, we do have the People's Choice Award coming up and you'll be able to vote on your favorite photograph. And then that photograph will be given the People's Choice Award. Well, thank you very much indeed. Uh, we, are, we are out of time, I believe. I believe we're, thank you so much for your questions and that discussion. Uh, some very, very challenging ones, and rightly so. Uh, but we loved answering them. Thank you so much. And now, I believe, uh, a quick word uh, from those fine folks at Insight. Welcome, everyone. I'd like to start on behalf of Insight Investment by thanking Royal Museums Greenwich, the Royal Observatory, and the contestants in this year's competition for creating such a wonderful showcase of astronomy photography for 2020. Insight is proud to support institutions that are encouraging public engagement with the arts and the sciences, and in particular, encouraging children to take an interest in STEM subjects at school, which is so important to all of our futures. Astronomy is a field in science where dramatic new discoveries seem to be made almost every day. But at the same time, images of space are a reminder of how much knowledge still lies out there as yet undiscovered. This year's images are yet another very welcome reminder of the wonderfully complex and beautiful world that we have such great privilege to live in and experience. And I'd like to thank all the contestants this year for bringing their images to us and sharing them so we can enjoy them. And uh, well done on behalf of Insight to all of the winners in this year's competition tonight. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for being with us. All these amazing images, it makes you feel rather stunned. The universe feels like it's drawing closer to us. That's one of the joys of this competition. And if you want to see these images over and over again, of course, uh, they are all to be found in this publication here. Absolutely. So make sure to check out our website and you can see all of the shortlisted images that have been shown tonight. Uh, but also you can buy one of these books, which has all of the shortlisted images as well. But also make sure to check out our space newsletter and you can be updated about the exhibition that's going to be opening soon. Now, if you're inspired by these images tonight and you'd like to enter the next competition, our 2021 competition will be opening up in January. So stay tuned. And one of the great joys, we always think we can't be amazed any further by these incredible images. And then the next year's competition begins and the images come in and once again, we are even more spellbound than we were the year before. Let's see what 2021 brings. Until then, from the Insight Investment Astronomy Photographer of the Year, here from the Royal Observatory Greenwich, from us, a very good night.